All right, my friends, welcome to this extremely special podcast episode. I think you're you're lit up there. Yep. Um, today, I'm going to just do a little reading for you, but after this, I'm, I'm not going to, and I'm going to let this incredible human being talk. We have uh, Dr. Barry Morgulin. He's a 35-year practicing gastroenterologist and endoscopic surgeon from uh, UCLA. Um, wise before wise, but so I, I got to listen to a few interviews uh, that he had done beforehand, and uh Dr. Barry, as we'll call him, he's kind of this this bridge that I think a lot of us have been looking for of somebody who is uh, extraordinarily well trained in the medical field, um, but saw some of the gaps that are in that field and perhaps how people are being taken care of and got ec- extraordinarily curious with um, not just treating people when they're sick, but also what's the source of the cause uh, of some of these ailments that people are dealing with or probably all the elements that people are dealing with. Um, and then how can we start looking at that from a more spiritual, energetic perspective and has gone on a pretty tremendous, I think that's an understatement of the century from what I've heard, um, kind of like life journey mm-hmm. that uh, aligns itself with some of the really cool blockbuster movies that people see. And so I've heard uh, quite a bit about that. And today I'm super happy to share this uh, genius with you. And something I want to let you guys know that kind of knocked me on my ass today and I was wondering for myself how many people on the planet have this name but I found out from Dave Asprey that uh, one of your titles is Grandmaster and that there's only a dozen of you on planet earth and you are the first western Grandmaster Um, and I'll let you kind of get into what that is so Dr. Barry welcome to today's show super happy to have you pleasure to be here thank you very much yeah thank you um so really like the first thing um i just want to give some people context i know i give a really brief summary on who you are and what you do um but ultimately i just want you to tell a little bit about your story um uh, maybe why you got into medical school what was the reasoning behind that and then ultimately kind of what led you more on this spiritual path it's it's great to be here guy um i've also heard a lot about you so that's why i as soon as we were in the area, I said, oh, this is something we're going to do. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, no, no, really. Yeah. And um, you're being a sincere, genuine person is your MO. That's how people uh, said, oh, yeah, he's, you'll like him. And so that's what's happened. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that. So my, uh, I think, Odysseus uh, travail throughout <laughs> uh, life uh, started, uh, you know, about 30 years ago when... Um, I was at UCLA uh, working uh, in my fellowship and uh, uh, gastroenterology, and I was already board certified in internal medicine, and then I was getting my, got my boards in gastroenterology and then did research in, in GI and was able to have, you know, produce something in that that was successful. And then uh, extremely busy practice after that, right after I went into uh, practice in Los Angeles, and mm-hmm. I still have two practices there. Uh, that have been continuously busy. uh, And that was great to see so many people that you could help uh, with the endoscopic techniques that were blossoming then. So uh, initially, believe it or not, uh, before the endoscopy equipment got really, really good, uh, there was still a heavy pressure from uh, old guard Western medicine to, you know, surgery for everything. And uh, I was thrilled to see that could be doing surgical techniques without cutting people just on the inside with an endoscope, you know, go through the mouth, through other orifices, through the abdomen, and then you could take tumors out, you could laser, you could do all kinds of things and get somebody completely well without ever having to cut, and they could go home. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, it's sometimes a day, two days, but the point was that people really healed faster, and I was so excited to see all the things we could do for people, except that I noticed that over and over again, uh, I would have uh, clients uh, either in the emergency room uh, who would return uh, with another illness, yes. with something else. And, hey, Fred, what are you doing back? He says, well, you know, now I've got this other problem. Mm. And then I'll, and I said, okay, let's fix that. And uh, you don't have to be admitted this time. Or I would have a, uh, a patient on the floor. I think, some, I think other people have heard about this older uh, Hispanic woman, Mrs. Gonzalez, or, and there was a Mrs. Rodriguez. There's, there's more than one who... Uh, were there with multiple polyps came in we removed them they were very happy uh but then they would always look at me and say 
uh, you know, I, I got to get back to my nine children and take, I'm the mother of the house yeah. of, of, of taking care of all these wonderful kids and everybody works. And, you know, I would I'd sit on their bed and I'd say, you know, it's, I really wish there was a way that people could, could get well and stay well and not have to come in at all. And uh, both of these older ladies would, uh, I remember, because it happened more than once, would look at me and say, well, you know, if anybody's going to do it, you're the guy, why don't you go do it? And I went, yeah, I think I want to do that. So I made a pact with myself. Hmm. Uh, and it was a very ethereal day, the time that I remember the most uh, with Miss Rodriguez, where the sun was coming in and I was sitting on her bed and I was uh, sort of holding her hand, this elderly, uh, somewhat obese Hispanic woman, but a sweet face, and saying, you know, God, I really, my heart goes out to her and I feel that towards all the patients that I'm going to be treating going on for the next who knows how many years, sure. there's got to be something that can be done. And of course, I mentioned this to other doctors and they all said, you're at the top of your field. What are you doing? Where are you going? You're already, there's no place else for you to go except keep doing more research. But, uh, you know, you have to stay in the Western model. There isn't anything. What are you looking for? Fountain of youth? Yeah. And I said, maybe, let me see. So then I went on my search, but there was no one's going to fund it in those days. They'd fund for traditional Western medicine research, but not for what I was looking for, which is how not to even get sick, but also could it be possible? This is what really turned me on. Could it be possible that instead of, you know, most people, a guy think of life as sort of you go along like this mm -hmm. and then like this and then like this. And then over time it's down and then you say, well, you know, that's age and that's how things are. Yeah. And I said, what if, what if it didn't have to go that way? What if you could go like this and then get stronger each day and get more powerful each day? That it isn't that you're actually made to be actually more vital because the cells in your body do that all the time. And, you know, in those days, they didn't have all the research on genetics that is known now with epigenetics, which sure. has all come out. All the stuff from uh, Harvard and, and MIT uh, is, is coming out a lot now about saying that, there, oh, there's a whole lot that can be done. Uh, just how do we access it? Well, that's, but there was no one even saying that in the days that I started out. People were just saying, no, there's nothing you can do. People just sort of go like this. Much more said, fixed way of and, thinking. And, I, yeah. and I, I said, you know, well, there's no evidence for that now that people could get better and better. But if, if it is, I'm going to make it my search. So that was my new research, which was to go any place and every place I could discover something that would be um, alternative uh, to the, and I'm at the top of technology to help people painlessly with endoscopy. And still, that wasn't enough to stop them from keep coming back to the emergency room or their relatives or whoever. And so I saw everybody's pain was bothering me. You know, every time I was sure, I'm sure it would be like with you, with your child. You know, with me, every patient came in was like a child or a relative. I was feeling hmm. more and more sad that, you know, this is not the way I want my career to completely end up. I want to be able to make some kind of difference for all these people if it's possible it doesn't exist so i went i used my own funds there was nobody going to fund me and i went like every two three months somewhere um and remember in los angeles in those days there was no like alternative care there was no integrative medicine there was just barely uh there's no starbucks there was no uh, espresso <laughs> coffee there was uh, donut shops and uh maybe one or two vitamin shots but that was it i mean i don't think we even had croissants <laughs> in those days and uh, la was supposed to be somewhat advanced i mean the, there was a one grocery store that was, that eventually grew uh mrs gooch's which turned out to you know eventually be a chain that turned mm -hmm. out to grow and uh, it was wonderful to find someone interested in farm to table kind of food but that wasn't even big then either everything was already you know prepackaged and ready sure. for the grocery store so anyway i went i studied so many different things i mean it wasn't any, i mean i actually learned um acupuncture uh chiropractic uh, osteopathy um crystal therapies uh, water therapy i went all up and down the coast of california went to the uh the native americans in the uh, southern united states and did the you know vision quests and breathed a lot of smoke in those teepees yes but uh and also went through all those things about being left out in the uh forests and you know all the uh, outer bounds uh, things that were available in those days to test yourself and see is there something else that i could discover or talk to people mostly i was interested in going through whatever anybody else had gone through and say well what's the results because if it's the results i want to bring it back to ucla sure uh even though i was in private practice then uh, i still was you know connected uh with 
uh, teaching there sometimes or connect with all the uh, the rest of my uh, colleagues there. So, um, and really quick, out of, out of curiosity, at this point, um, are you clear that the symptoms that people are exhibiting are that they they have energetic components, they have spiritual components, or are you still looking at it completely from the Western physical? You're just looking to heal those kind of ailments. I think that's you, you hit on the point. Inside, I constantly had this like. Uh, GPS that kept going, this is not the direction you want to go. This direction with the whole body, the yes. heart, gives a person a better chance because everybody knows in uh, athletics, uh, as you're going through grade school, high school, if you do anything that's really great, uh, you get into this zone space right. where you're really, really capable where to go and uh, how do you get bring it back. And I said, there's other places the body can really do great things. Let's, how could I access that? So, and then I ended up traveling over the next six or seven years about 160,000 miles around the planet. Wow. Around, or I go to Central America, South America, um, uh, Europe. Like shamanic uh, work, plant medicine work, all, all yeah, this. Well, there's even photos of me with uh, all the shamanic gear on yeah. and with the painted face and all that stuff because I wanted to find out what could you do with that. Same. You know, how much, mm -hmm. you know, you're down in Ecuador or you're in the, uh, uh, the jungles there, and yes, I tried all those wonderful things that yep. people are playing around with now and doing microdosing. And I must say that um, not all those herbs and these big wonderful things that you could take and people are trying now were still not something. Uh, although they were great experiences, they're you know out of body experiences, uh, transcendental experiences. Um, that just you know the herbs they have down there are amazing. Sure. Uh, we still, you have to go down there to actually, and get to know them to know more, more than what people are really experiencing even now. There's some of the, you know, the, they're beyond LSD kind of medications. Yes. But the point was, I couldn't bring that back to UCLA. Of course not. Yeah. I couldn't bring that back to say, okay, we now have something, Mrs. Rodriguez, that you don't have to worry about. Mm -hmm. You're gonna take this, you know, this dose of this every day is going to make you strong. Yep. And, uh, I, and, and so then I studied all the herbs I could and, uh, uh, there was, let's see, what else was, there was in, um, there's all these crystal caves in Brazil, mm -hmm. I mean, really big crystals. I'm sure you've been down there and then and you can meditate in those and it was great. Uh, we mentioned Paramahansa Yogananda, who mm -hmm. was, when I remember reading his book and I went, where are you? I want to, <laughs> I have to find where you were connected. And so I learned all about meditation and enjoyed all many forms of meditation. But you know, there's so many different, wonderful, um, it, it, culturally around the world ways of learning to meditate. Yes, which all contributed to me. You don't have to just you don't have to get as far out as the shamanic techniques or as the deep jungle techniques or um, you know meditating in Egypt in the pyramids. I mean, there's so many different ways that you can connect, and people are finding that out. But still. That's me. I wanted to have her. I wanted you, whoever. I wanted to give this out to the world. Yep. I wanted to find something we could distribute to the world that everybody would have it so you wouldn't have to go to the hospital anymore. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have to get sick and you wouldn't have to buy any medications. You'd be able to take care of yourself and your family. And uh, I, I felt it existed. And so the, the only rough part of that was every time I would come back, because I'd have other doctors covering my practice. And remember, they're all still very solid. I mean, in those days, I wore a white coat all the yeah, time. Yeah, very rigid structures, yeah. And a tie. Yeah. Right out of, uh, you know, the routine Dr. Kildare look. Mm -hmm. And because um, that's what was the uniform. And uh, the other doctors go, you know, you, you know, we're, people are going to steal your practice if you keep taking all these trips. And where are you going? What do you think? Find the Fountain of Youth? Are you, you know, you're out of your mind. You, should, you shouldn't do that. And I'd, and I'd go, I don't think anybody's going to see my practice. And so far, you know, <laughs> I don't mind you all taking the patients because I think I have to find this out. This is like, I'm not finished. Yet. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm just not finished with my education and research of finding sound. And it doesn't seem to exist yet. And they say, well, you're never going to find it. One of my nemesis said that. You're, never, you're just wasting your time. And it's, it's a bad idea. So I said, well, thank you. But that's, that's not my what my goal is i'm going to keep going so year after year i went to a different place and so let's see we talked about central america south america i went to uh in europe in in germany they have all the electrical uh, equipment which has gotten much better there they have a lot of better uh, equipment now uh all of which you can get on the internet you're talking which, like beamer mats and those kind right, of things they had, yeah. be they had beamer they had rife yeah. and rife has been completely upgraded they've got millions of different uh choices there but yeah. the point was it was still after the fact yeah See, so mm -hmm. I was going, okay, 
well, you're going to use the electrical device to find out what else you need, and then we're going to put current through you. But uh, as far as uh, your body's cellular structure, to dial in just the right sensitivity of the uh, uh, vibration that you need, is uh, it, it takes really close monitoring. And all the machines... In, in, internally, as, a, as far as like a personal awareness or monitoring from an outside Well, let's source. see. There's machines like the Rife in those days. Yeah. Uh, they, they shook you like this. Yes. And I had a friend in, in South Africa, in Cape Town, who um, uh, had two Rife machines. Yeah. Big, tall guy, Austrian guy, and he was always using his Rife machine. And I would always say, and I tried it out, and I, tried, I worked with people in Germany and uh, Frankfurt and in Munich. Uh, with the, the equipment they had and in Garmisch Parkenkirchen and a number of places in Germany, uh, Bremen, uh, where I would also teach endoscopy, but uh, which was my technique for being able to travel. I would always get to visit with doctors in different uh, places, and I would say, okay, I'm going to teach all the techniques that we've uh, advanced at UCLA because we're a very, very good program in these mm. days as far as endoscopic surgery. And I, and but while I was there, uh, I'll never forget there was a guy in London uh, who I talked to, uh, at a really prestigious hospital, and um, we were talking about advanced techniques and removing gallstones out of the bile duct system and really sensitive things. It took a lot of uh, uh, adaptable ability with your fingers to be able to manipulate the scopes and be able to do the work correctly uh, and safely. Um, and I said, okay, okay, you know, it was afternoon. Uh, and I said, we're going to close up now. So, so, so I've got these other questions I want to ask you. He goes, well, what else? I said, <laughs> is there anything that you know, is alternative, that's integrative, that, that would allow people not to develop these problems? Uh, or what, what are other people taking that are not coming to the hospital or not c coming down with these problems? He, and I'll never forget, he looked at me and went, you want you need to talk to my grandmother mm. she has stuff from the old country you know before she came over she's she does stuff like that but we don't have anything in the in the pharmacies or anyplace else that that's going to really make that big of a difference you know because i think in london what i got enamored with in those days was the bach remedies all the flower remedies right. and were wonderful things and, yeah. and in france when i worked in paris uh not that it had to be paris there was other cities but the point was it was a center for great knowledge in western medicine and yet even there what i was able to learn in those days was all the di i bought back a lot of aerators uh for all the flat uh, uh all the uh beautiful wonderful aromatherapy that they had developed so they had wonderful aromatherapy and i had them all over my office in my office i had aromatherapy machines going in each room and i was always testing asking the patient how do you feel do you think this is going to you know, have an effect? And, you know, it was wonderful, but it still wasn't the thing. Preventative, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't enough to get people stronger either. It was, sure. it, it was just something that made things a little easier for where they were at. So it was finally ended up in China. And in China, um, I, you know, I was, that was at the end. Like and this is, in the, this is in the 80s, yeah. China. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, different uh, place. I, completely different. Yeah. Completely. They're still wearing the outfits, mm. the, the old Mao outfits because it was a poor country then it's not like now where it's extremely wealthy that's right yeah and actually i prefer the old style because you know, that's what i that's where i finally found what i was looking for and i was working in one of the hospitals uh there and i'll never forget i saw a book in one of the libraries there uh, and everything all those since world war ii they hadn't really been able to have that much money to to improve all the hospitals so there was a lot of still you know, unpainted areas and books stacked, things weren't taken care of. They didn't have much money. But I found this book where it showed this one um, uh, master with the whole regalia treating a client uh, who was uh, uh, obviously had broken wound, and he, but he wasn't touching him, teaching him, treating him from a distance, you know, and they were showing that he was, uh, as I looked at the pages, he was healing them uh, without even uh, having to do any surgery or any lasering like we would have to do with endoscopy. But in China, I finally got to uh, uh, see this book. Where, and so I ran to the head of the hospital there where I was working. I said, hey, i got to meet this guy uh, who's doing this. And they went, well, you've been doing great here, and you've been teaching us, and uh, we're, we're hoping you, you stay, and you're, we're very satisfied with all the, uh, your work, but that's impossible. And I went, just like that? That's impossible? He said, that's impossible. Mm. And I said, why? He said, he is a national treasure. In China, that's a big thing where you have guards and they wear these badges and no one's allowed to be near them yeah because uh, he's the repository for all of chinese medicine which even in those days and these days are still the yellow emperor's book mm -hmm. you know? and uh they say all that has been delivered 
not only uh, to him and through him, but going back all the days 5,000 years ago, back to Lao Tzu and back to Wan Di and back to the uh, wonderful people that trained them. Yeah. And they said that his uh, oral tradition, he's the one who uh, has uh, is located at different monasteries, but he's not going to see you. Plus, if he ever did see you, you're not a dignitary, and it's very, very expensive. So he wouldn't see you. I said, well, how expensive? They go, well, in those days, it was like you know, 25 years ago, $10,000, well. one visit. And uh, you can imagine. But they didn't, so I said, I mean, you could imagine how upset I was. I was really, I felt like I finally found the person I was looking for, that here's someone who possibly had the, the juice to be able to show me that this is really real. Yeah. Oh, I left Lazy out. Fair. Well, yeah. no, and one thing I did leave out, it was also a trip to the Philippines. And I don't know if you know about Philippines, but they have, the, the, they have psychic surgery there. Okay, so I actually uh, worked with those uh, few people who could actually demonstrate that they could do psychic surgery. And it was extremely exciting. It was fun. But again, you're not going to come back to the university and say, okay, I want you to lay here flat. Don't worry about the blood. I'm just going to get my hand in your abdomen and right. pull out all the bad stuff which is all they knew they were doing uh, in terms of technically what was coming up. But there's a lot behind that, what they were doing, but it still wasn't going to be accepted. And plus, you're still sick. I want you to come. Be, I want you to be your, you, you're able to do it yourself. Yeah. And I want you to be able to stay well on your own. Remember, my goal is that you keep getting stronger on your own. Sure. So I said, well, I, that's unacceptable for me. I'm so I asked him and asked him and asked him. Finally, he said, okay, this is the chief officer. He said, I'll refer you to my cousin who uh, it can possibly get you someone who can take you up the mountain to the monastery he's at and so he referred me to because the cousin was really not really free with all the translation so he handed me over to a friend so now i don't even know who i'm with and he took me <laughs> up the mountain but then the motorcycle broke down and so i had to walk half the distance up there when i finally got to the camp though it was just like i was at uh you know star wars it was amazing seeing what was going on there because they were bringing people in front of the grand master and he was treating them without touching them, and I saw wounds heal in front of my eyes. Wow. And I'm used to sewing people up in the emergency room, but I'm not used to walking up there and having things go zzz. Yeah, like yeah, cellular generation, yeah, like yeah, instantaneously. Yeah. And it was great. So I was like, <sighs> That's incredible. And um, it, with a real interest in anthropology, I just did anything I could to, to convince the people around there to talk to him, because my Mandarin wasn't that good at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, to tell him that I would just love to see if I could just hang out and study there and uh, <laughs> see, and just watch what he does. And and I was the only American, only English-speaking person. I was wearing my baseball hat, so I was much taller than my, the people there. Sure. And they called me, uh, you know, uh, uh, they also gave me the same welcome. They went, no. And worse, they called me Gui Lao. And so Gui Lao in, it means white ghost, uh, or it just means ghost. It just means something not good yeah. in, in terms of Chinese culture. Mm -hmm. So it means we really don't need you. We're going to avoid you. We really don't need you. Here. Yeah. You're of no value. And he doesn't need people around of no value. And uh, you wouldn't understand it anyway. But I stayed. And that's another whole story. And that's, you know, I've got material that's going to come out and talk about those rough days of staying there when they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't even give me a place to sleep. Mm -hmm. But I didn't care. And, and eventually I got people who would give me some food each day. Uh, but I always stayed because I was just, oh, I'm, I'm at the place. This is it. I got to see it. Plus, you could feel it. You could feel this. Talk about John and God, how people go there, and all of a sudden you notice there's sort of a general feeling that, of well-being around yes. him. Well, this was more than well-being. This is like being in a hurricane. Yeah, like a field of, uh, of wellness. Field, it's like, it's yeah. like you're being levitated the whole time you're there. I was going, I feel great. I don't know wow. why I'm treating that guy, but I feel great. And mm. I'm 20 feet behind him. Mm. So the field he was creating was enough that he was bringing through him to treat um, the clients that came up and they came up for all kinds of reasons some psychological some people i saw you know being completely crazy again not without touch uh some people came for business and those people paid even more than ten thousand. i heard uh they wanted to make great financial decisions and when your brain is completely clear and you're not flummoxed with all the distractions that are in the world we're in you know the stress yeah and the confusion, and where do I go next, and all that. Uh, it's very easy, I eventually learned with the Grandmaster, to see in reality what your next best, best choice is. You're actually made to make great choices. Yes. And you do that if you've ever, um, have you ever ski? Yeah, one of my favorite sports. Okay, skiing yeah. is one of my favorites also. Yeah. So in skiing, you know, a lot of times you'll see um, maybe the two red uh, bars there, and you'll see that when you weren't expecting as you come over a hill, and you just quickly shift and ski around, and you're still having a great time. Sure. Right, so that's what he was trying to uh, 
elucidate to me uh, when we finally eventually got to connect, which is that within you, if you open up these sensors, just like in skiing, you're so in reality, the real reality, that if something's not good for you, just move away from it. Yeah. And if something is good for you, you can then start to enjoy it. So he called it being 360, that you're involved with your entire mm. experience in front of you, behind you, on either side. And so it, about two years, uh, back and forth, back and forth of, to China, I'm just all thrilled. Of course, I got sick many times. You know, there's not much cleanliness. Sure. So I don't want to recommend people getting yeah. all the different uh, in dysenteries that I got just to be there. But I really didn't care about that either because <laughs> as bad as I felt getting there uh, each time with either finding out where they were going to be and what, uh, no cell phones in those days, so it was hard to work things out all the time. Uh, uh, it was still worth it. Whenever I'd get to the camp, wherever he was uh, working on people, it was just phenomenal. Um, finally, one day he said, would you like uh, to um, learn? And I went, wow, this would be the greatest thing in the world. It was just a big surprise. I never thought he would even care to train me. And uh, he, he said, uh, but I have to tell you, there's a, through a translator, he said, you know, it's, it's, it's not a, a fun training. And uh, uh, no, one would, no one likes it. And yeah. You wouldn't like it. And plus, uh, nobody makes it. And I went, wait a minute, nobody makes it? I made it all these distances, you know, all the over, almost up to that time, 200,000 miles, traveling around the world, leaving my practice, yeah. uh, and just going for it to find this. And he says, I'm not going to make it? He says, yeah, you can see around me, there's, who, who is in the level that I'm in? that I can you know, work with in, uh, at the same level to treat all the different clients that come up here. He said that uh, you're only meant to go as far this lifetime as in this training to be able to help people with the energy uh, like this, uh, the special powers, uh, as you were meant to be. So if you don't go as far, that's it. So I said, okay, I'll take the deal. He said, but that's not all. He said, uh, also, there's no malpractice here. As you notice, when you come up the mountain, wherever we are, you don't see fences. You don't see any signs. Sure. We have people, you know, get hurt all the time. And so no one's going to help you if you get hurt. And you could even die. And I went, oh, this is not good. But I don't care. I, I, remember, you know, had, I felt like I was in a beam of light while he was talking to me. I was going, Doesn't matter, I wanna, <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And he says, it may take a long, long time. You may never make it to, you know, as long as you live. Yeah. And I said, I still want to be trained. So I did. I started the training program with him, and the, the wonderful thing about it was it was old China uh, with a lot of rules and a lot of severity and a lot of danger. Uh, I didn't like the danger part at all, and there were other people who would come to the camps where we were from different parts of Asia, uh, no Americans, uh, no English-speaking people. I was the only person who ever was, uh, you know, uh, Gui Lao being there as the uh, English-speaking uh, and no other doc, medical doctors either. I, I ended up being the only medical doctor, only English-speaking person, uh, Western, ever to have been trained in this and to have made it all the way to the end to be able to do this for other people, which is, you know, took a, it didn't happen overnight. How, long, how long did that take from start to finish? Over 10 years. Wow. And were you there the entire time, or you would no, kind of bounce back and, back and forth? forth but he wouldn't let you stay. I see. He would give you certain challenges, and then you'd have to do them. Some of the challenges were right there, and then he'd leave you, and then you, and you may never come back. Yeah. You have to find your way back to the camp, wherever he was. A lot of times you would never know where he was. So they're showing you like a technique. You're Show you a technique, and you have to master the technique. If you master the technique, the information will be uncovered self, in the technique. self uh, yeah, they revealing. Sort of show, they sort of showed that in, um, well, let's see. They showed that, you know the movie Doctor Strange? Yes. So you know how they said, you can't pick your... Uh, your robe or, or your special item, it will pick you. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Mm -hmm. That comes from one of my talks, which is that he said that if you're going to make it through each one, there will be something revealed to you at that moment that will give you the information to go on. That'll mean you're to go to the next step. And if you're not, settle for that. And there was one, it's just not a good story, but there's one guy <laughs> from uh, Hong Kong who I became very good friends with, mainly because he was funny and he spoke, Hong Kong people speak great English. Mm -hmm. So he was always helping me in translation, but he was really super educated guy and always would come to the camps not always when i was there but was often there and he was always complaining you know the grandmaster should show us things that this why is he stuck me with this one exercise which i don't see anything on the other side of it and he was always fighting him you know and always saying that uh, i mean internally not in front of him but internally he, he wouldn't just give himself fully to even simple exercises that 
we were trained in that you would say, God, that's such an easy act. How could there be any value in that? Yeah. But there was great values. And just like people say, how could there be any value in meditation just sitting there? Yeah. You know, they, they just don't have a clue that in some of these positions, uh, when you keep doing them, you get more and more opened up, more and more opened up yeah. into all of a sudden all what turned out to be finding out that you have these sensors all over your body that people don't learn to use. You only use a few of them. You use your ears. Right. Your vibrate. That's a sensor. You use your eyes. That's light sensors. I mean, there's just so many, but uh, mostly we focus on the big five here in Western medicine. Mm -hmm. In there, we learn to focus on thousands of them. Uh, and so uh, he didn't do too well, that guy. He ended up dying. Yeah, it was sad. Uh, and he died. it was in one of the challenges, too, which made me even more... Uh, wondering, do I wonder how to continue with this? I mean, just, you know, sometimes I'd be at the camp and I'd say a week earlier, I was doing surgeries in the hospital with nurses and giving orders and having all these people come to me and getting people, what quote unquote, well in Western medicine, getting them out, everybody's happy. And I'm going, that was a good life. What am I doing here? People are dying. Yeah. I, I may be next. Yeah. But I still said, what else am I going to do? This can you, is can you give some examples? Because I heard, I heard, you know, from previous interviews, some of the things, and I thought they were fascinating in terms of like challenges? the type of challenges they were putting you into, because they really were uh, the, not easy were, to say yes to. They were all not easy, and they all weren't with, with no guarantee on any of them. Yeah, yeah. So I just want to like give some people some context so they kind of know what energies you're working with that allowed for these things. Okay, well, yeah. there's ones yeah. for all different levels. There's two. This energy I eventually found out was as the you know the head of the hospital had told me that. He was the repository of all the source energy uh, that had spawned Tai Chi, Qigong, uh, herbal medicine, which is one of the things I learned before I got to go up there. I, I was teaching in China. I actually studied herbology both here and there, worked in the pharmacy there. Yeah. And their herbs were, you know, it wasn't anything pure, not like today with the capsules. We'd grind up all kinds of things from the mountains and we'd have to go out and get them. It was almost like being a botanist, which was sort of exciting because that was before I ever got to meet the Grand Master. But, uh, and I also learned acupuncture there, um, which could have been you know, something I could have stopped with, but it wasn't. I still wanted to keep going until finally I met him and got to work with him. And so some of the challenges, let me see. Um, okay, so there's two branches. One branch uh, of the source energy is the what you would call the martial arts branch. Uh, the other one is the branch that has to do with uh, high performance, self-realization, enlightenment, and um, improving your mental faculties so that you actually are better each day at being able to make decisions and help people, help your family, help everyone without you know making mistakes and running your skis over the orange yeah. cross there. So. In an example of one of the training things was uh, one time uh, he sent me up to uh, go up there. There's an old temple, and don't come down until you have uh, you know, your transformation of what the next step is. So I go up to this old temple. I don't think I've told this on a, a, a podcast before, but it's, it's a good example. So I went up to this old temple, and it was old. And it was broken down, it, and uh, there wasn't many people around there. And so I went, well, this is great. Uh, there's nobody here speaking English. I have no <laughs> idea what I'm supposed to be getting out of this experience. Plus, he said, don't come back until I have the result. And I don't know what the result is. Yeah. So, you know, that isn't what you tell the chief of a department in Western medicine sure. at the hospital where everybody goes, here, can you sign this note here? Can this patient leave? Can you get this prescription? I mean, you're always doing the right thing and it gets done. Here, I'm going to go there. I have no idea when the end's going to happen. Yeah. So I went up there and finally I just, I just looked around and there was some <laughs> uh, really destroyed old I, uh, different uh, uh, carvings of Buddha and there was some some drawings on the walls that uh, in ch uh, Chinese lettering uh, and uh, some old fainted paintings, but it was really a broken down temple. So I said, well, you know, I guess I just, I should just like try to find out at every level. And he taught me a lot about different levels of existence by that time. And uh, to see what else is there here that for me to get. So I sat down and just, uh, you know, in, in a meditative position, legs crossed and just sat there and kept, you know, just getting deeper and deeper and deeper. And then finally I opened my eyes uh, at one point uh, and I saw this uh, 
this Mandarin sign up there, which earlier I'd seen it, but it really I hadn't taken much cognizance of it. And at the top it said, uh, nobody. You know, nobody. And then underneath it said, nobody. And I went, nobody, nobody, nobody. <laughs> and I went, oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. So you, it, everyone thinks that you exist and that you're important and you've got worries and you've got concerns and you've got family, you've got money to make, you've got uh, a profession to create, you've got love to experience. However, without your body, you're still nobody. Yeah. And so what the purpose of that was at that level was that this wonderful structure that we have is underrated a thousand percent. How about a million percent? How about a billion percent? You're distracted into, okay, well, if I can make this stock trade, then I'll have enough money to be able to buy this sure. thing, and wouldn't that be fun? And it'd be great to make this uh, uh, discovery in something else. Super but narrow. Whatever yeah. you're doing, you can't do it without this. Mm -hmm. And people want to say, oh, no, I'm existing, and you know, with all the books, I'm existing in multiple planes at one time, and I'm, I'm really not here. You know, All those wonderful things people like to say. However, you know, if you stub your toe, you know you're here. And uh, if you cut yourself, you'll see that you bleed. Or even if you learn how to stop the bleeding, which you know now I've shown people, but the, the key is that um, I got that experience there that uh, I would no longer uh, not just experience my body sort of an athletic experience and trying to stay in great shape and learn all the different martial arts that they were teaching me in the camp but the, and learn how to defend myself, uh, but also that at each moment I would start to experience the body as something else. And that something else allowed me to go through a number of different other levels, which were extremely dangerous. And uh, it, I never had those magical abilities uh, to handle those kind of experiences without uh, knowing that the body was a, uh, a wonderful structure to bring in all types of different vibrations to allow you to do things you never thought possible. And people say, well, what do you mean? Well, just you can go back to examples that have nothing to do with China. I mean, we have stories about, you know, a woman who, I mean, it's, it's recorded, a woman who lifts the car off, sure. her, off her son. Sure. Where'd she get that strength all of a sudden? I mean, really? Did she did work out? No. Does she have the strength? No. Could she do it again? Maybe, but she isn't going out trying it. That's right. She's not a weightlifter. So where does all that ability come from? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's that you have the ability just like... Um, did you, ever, did you ever play baseball or tennis? Uh, I play tennis, yeah. Okay. Do you ever notice a good tennis shot where uh, all of a sudden, you know, you hit it and and it just, you, you, you know, it was a great shot, even without looking to see where it went. Mm -hmm. And it makes that special sound, yes. almost like no sound. Yeah, it's like a no effort it's shot. Like no, yeah. no sound. That's being totally in your body. Yeah. Action, totally action without achievement almost. Right. Yeah. That's, you're totally in the zone. And that's where we're supposed to live all the time. Yeah. The Grandmaster. So that was the next level. I needed to stay, learn to stay in that level all the time if I was going to go up any higher. So from that point on, you know, you talk to people that go, well, you know, I've studied meditation and I've learned to meditate in different temperatures and things like that. But, and there's walking meditation. But with him after that, there was no difference between meditation and life. And awake and state. Sleep, yeah. the meditation, you're awake and meditating. You're yeah. always, you're always rising in a higher and higher vibration along with the planet along with everything else that's going on here which is wonderful because you get infused by all that so when they had me sit and meditate once in the uh, snow uh, with just a small gi on uh you know and i was hoping it wasn't going to take too long because i and they said you sit here and don't come we won't come back yeah. until you know you're ready and i went well, I hope that I'm ready before I freeze out here. But eventually I said, well, I am going to freeze unless I do something to keep generating more and more and more, you know, the body uh, warmth and heat, even though that wasn't, didn't have rat to do all that. And, and eventually, you know, I was in such a state that I was able, wasn't even aware when they finally came back, but when they came back, uh, the Grandmaster pointed and they showed that, you know, all around me, the, all around the snow in a circle, it had melted, mm. and I'd stayed in the center, even though I wasn't even completely unaware of that. Now, being in that state, to be able to bring in that much energy to keep myself warm and my surroundings was what kept me, I think, from getting a you know severe frostbite or freezing sure. at that time. Would it be accurate to say that you're, it's like a extremely spacious awareness at that point, and you're... That you don't exist in terms of just what you think is any resistance that's in front of you. What's in front of you is just a, an opportunity for you to expand even further at every moment. That's what I learned. There yeah. wasn't anything that was considered an obstacle. You weren't aware of your endocrine system or... No, you don't like have that. to go to different places. Yeah. The Western medicine, although I love it in terms of what it's contributed, that's not this discipline. This discipline is more like quantum, 
more like quantum physics, which actually Tesla and Einstein refer all the way back to the Yellow Emperor's book that says that the, the antecedents of quantum physics, uh, even Einstein refers to that, is back discovered back then with the, you remember the yin yang symbol. Mm-hmm. And what that's all about, you know, is that you have it, you have everything to do with everything. It doesn't happen in life uh, for you without you being there. Or you could say it the other way, unless you choose not to. Yeah. And then it doesn't happen to, with you, but you still chose. Yeah. So you're always the chooser. Mm-hmm. And people say, well, that's just a philosophical t- approach. And you can take that attitude. But if you study any of the materials that we've got for you on the website at Energy for Success, that's the name of the website, Energy and the company, Energy for Success. Can I just recreate that? So are you saying that li- life is arising through you? Like everything you're experiencing is, ari- is arising out of you? There's nothing that you're not experiencing that you don't have an option in having a relationship to it one way or the other. Now, mm-hmm. how intense that relationship can be, it takes some training. Yes. But in terms of being able to heal somebody who's not in the room, uh, who's on the other side of the planet, who calls me and wants something, uh, that takes a little more work. But it's easier to treat someone who's two feet away from you. Or it's easier to show them a technique rather than showing them over the phone or showing them over uh zoom Internet, but yeah. now we've recorded so many of the videos and audios that my you know my goal has finally been accomplished that uh well the first goal was finally making it through the whole system and uh do you want to hear how that happened well i'm, I'm curious if, before you go there is a is a relationship non-binary like you're no longer looking at is it this or this it's just kind of everything is in a coexistence Say that in other words. Meaning, you know, like most people are so, you know, and very like basic uh, meditation speak, right? There's things arising within you. There's the pleasant sensation. There's the non-pleasant sensation. Oftentimes just you're told to value them equally to just notice sensation and kind of remove the unpleasantness or pleasantness from it. Because I've also sat in uh, 10-day silent meditations of gained what would seem like science fiction type power is done sporadic healing on my own body. Nice. Things of this nature. Good. Uh, have struggled with stabilizing those frequencies and energies. That's supposed to be your minute by minute experience. Yeah. And you take a breath, that's your breath. Right. (laughs) So I'm I'm curious again, like, is it that you, because from a quantum field perspective, right, like everything is in a coexistence binary, the zeros and ones are kind of in a coexistence. Is it something along those lines that you're actually starting to experience reality or matter in this kind of more of a quantum field experience? Yeah. Absolutely. The Matrix movie goes into that. Yeah. The first movie, you know, when finally Neil goes, hmm. Right, he, he, it off he connects. Says, yeah, he says that's it, Smith. You know, and then he goes, and that's when he's ready. He Here finally, it's all feeling, and then everything is X's and O's. Everything is uh, pluses and minuses. It's all something that's up for your involvement. If you're going to be involved in it, you have a tremendous ability to have it go one way or the other, and that's in your tennis shot. When you have that tennis shot, and what's really great about a great tennis hit, or someone's hit a great baseball, or a great softball, is that. Um, after you hit it, um, first place, when it comes at you, you almost know that it's going to be a great shot. Right. You can almost hear the words, home run. Yeah, it's a no-mind experience. Yeah, it's a no-mind experience. Yeah. And if you see the people on TV um, who fall into the zone like that, um, you know, they almost don't move right away. Even though they hit the ball, great, they're sort of suspended because they're fascinated uh, by the fact that they got such a great hit and it feels so good sure. that you're just not ready to go run and you, then all of a sudden then you take off and run the bases or something like that. And and that experience is available to you and those results are available to you um, moment by moment in everything you do. And we have a program that goes into the fact that it's available in all eight areas that the Grandmaster you know, instructed me in, which is that you're you know, in relationships. Uh, and I've got all kinds of testimonies about this in, in love and connection with other people, in your financial success, in your physical prowess, and you being flexible and stronger every day, um, uh, in your uh, actually being functional without stress. You know, you don't have to be taking something to de-stress yourself if you're not getting stressed every day if you're actually able to uh i mean i had one lady from silicon valley said well you know they said i couldn't multitask and i thought i could i thought i had to stop because it was making me crazy but now it's fun and i don't get stressed out about anything yeah somebody can it's just like something comes in on the waves and i go back with it and i don't have to you know reprogram myself each moment going i'm calm i'm calm i'm calm yeah. you don't have, there's none of that this is the way you were meant to be true alignment yeah, this is yep. what you're meant to be. And whenever you hit that ball or when you took that ski turn, I mean, think about it. 
when you made the turn on skiing and you avoided the two red X's uh, or bars there, I mean, you didn't go through, let's see, I want to micro turn my right hand just sure. two centimeters and I want to turn my knee one eighth of an inch and I want to rotate up on my, no, all that is a command to your body, your body responds. Mm -hmm. And the environment responds with you, and then all of a sudden you're connected to it. That's the 360. So that's the part that has that's the joy of uh, of taking all these practices that I brought back for everyone to use to allow you to have this kind of life to keep going forward up stronger each day, because uh, you can just focus on whichever one you want. And we have them for you in auditory. You can just listen guided breathing visualizations or uh, videos. And what's embedded in them is the vibrations to bring it out of you so you don't have to think about it because our whole thinking process has become a little bit you know overwhelming yes. uh, and hasn't really brought the freedom that people thought it would be i mean we've had plenty of smart people over the years and we've got a lot of tech but that's only one half of the yin yang symbol the other half is you and how powerful can you be at every moment without you know thousands of other things that you ingest uh, what if you were pulling in all the energies that are available for you to take in from the whole planet? Yeah. And I, that's why I stayed the length there until finally I actually, you know, what the grandmaster said, okay, you're, you know, you made it. And, uh, then he went through this whole thing about, uh, in, he had an inter, I, he gave me an interview with him and uh, alone, which I never thought I would get. Uh, and he said, you know why we decided to, uh, train you. And, um, you know, at that moment, I'm sitting about 10 feet from him. It's the closest I'd been to him when he wasn't doing some treatment on somebody. Uh, and I said, didn't, you know, I said, oh, this is one of those Zen moments. So this is where I'm supposed to do something, you know. And I'd read all about and studied Zen and all the different techniques of, of, of possible representing uh, myself in the midst of this why question. I knew it wasn't just going to be a, a simple answer. I said, well, maybe he wants me to knock something off the wall by not touching it using an energy field or something. <laughs> or maybe his son wants to go to medical school. I mean, I couldn't figure it out. So finally, I just went back to that place in the energy and then finally just answered him. I said, I really don't know. Hmm. And I didn't think that I'd blown it or anything. I just said, I really don't know. And so then... He said, well, I'll tell you. And then from that point on, while I was sitting there sort of in this uh, Buddha position, he, I got hotter and hotter and hotter until finally I'm just sweating like crazy. And he's all the way across the room smiling at me, uh, drinking tea, and telling me about my life growing up in Louisville, Kentucky. He's telling you. Yeah, to a translator. V verbatim. So, yeah, and he's telling me things that nobody knew. Sure. Uh, especially he says, why when you were just uh, real small, you know, and you had special powers to treat different animals and mm. even treat uh, your aunt and your sister uh, that you stop doing that later. Why, why did you do that? Why did you, uh, didn't you make that something you pursued instead of going just into Western medicine? You know, he knew all about that. Sure. It just shocked me. And then he says, yeah, it's time. You've made it. He says, you made it to the other side to, to be able to help other people with this and, and your, you know, your integrity is good so that we, we want you to go back to the west and see if you can make the contribution that he knew why i wanted to learn all this he knew that not only did i want to like give western medicine uh, a chance to uh, only be there for therapeutics when you really needed it yeah and let people take over their own lives and yeah. be stronger each day and you be your own uh health provider that you're actually uh, able to help yourself and your family and your children all as a family unit rather than thinking that uh, you don't know what you're doing or don't know how to take care of things or it's all too mental when it isn't just like hitting a good tennis ball when you did there's not much thinking about it right it was all of a sudden you're just in the flow so i got to bring back all these techniques and over the years i've had multiple multiple conferences and lectures where i've had you know, thousands of testimonials now but i never wanted to advertise it uh because i wanted to be word of mouth i wanted it to be something that if it was good that if the western world was ready for it it would stand on a its purity, own. yeah it would stand on its own yeah. so the whole company has all been you know the thousands and thousands of people over the years that i've been able to uh pass this information on to who've been watching the videos or listening to the guided breathing visualizations actually we have one for your audience yeah. uh we'll that's, let you share that app. for sure yeah yeah um that We've had great results. So I've got over 40,000 testimonials now. And it's all been by wow. word of mouth. So now that I'm going to stop doing surgery, I'm going to come out and be able to, you know, kind people like you inviting me to be on podcasts. 
and uh, I'm doing some presentations from stage, and we have all these materials now for people to actually not have to go hang on a mountain in China and be left there for two days and not, and not have to be freezing, wondering what's going on, to just get one of the vibrational techniques to be able to uh, make yourself healthier, stronger, more able uh, to have serendipity on command, to uh, actually be in flow or in zone at will. So uh, that's, that's the benefits. Yeah, I love that. And uh, have you found that it's like, a, as you've gone through this process, you share it, obviously, a lot of time has passed. Um, kind of, uh, I know, there's a lot of science behind this, too. But from like a spiritual perspective, you know, there's the Akash, like the, the server in the sky that's holding all the information, so to speak. And I, I have found some research that shows if, um, let's say 10 different labs across the planet are synthesizing some kind of protein, and one discovers how to do that, the other nine will discover that with us within a short period of time with no communication between the labs Isn't that great but it's you almost like that? it's almost like something is remembered yeah, in the field and yeah, it becomes more right. bioavailable exactly. for everybody it's like we're setting the grooves yeah, right exactly. so i love what you're doing because it's like you're taking this ancient wisdom you're making it exactly more available for everybody so how how realistic is it now between giving someone these tools and watching them stabilize a kind of frequency that is reviving the body or bringing more energy to it like what's what's the time frame that people can expect it, well, you just choose which of the, um, there's over 256 different vibrations, okay? Okay. But what's so great about the materials that I was instructed in that I've now brought and recorded for everybody to use is that if you're more kinesthetic and you want to do the physical ones, mm. there's over 100 of those that I have perfectly translated and perfectly brought for people to use, and there we have them in different courses Beautiful. available for people. If you're an auditory and you really like to just listen to things, because some people really would rather listen than sure. read uh, or watch, um, then we've got the guided breathing visualizations. Uh, and you know, the guided breathing visualizations and meditation has been around for a long time. However, to get the result right away, I've got these ones that we've translated. That we've got report after report after report. Some are seven minutes long. Some of them are 20 minutes long. Um, some are even longer. And people get results that day that day so it isn't like oh the promise of finally you know spending a week in a meditation uh retreat i hope i get my result with these people get the result right away even if you've never done it you just listen and all of a sudden you just relax and as long as you aren't playing with your dog or your cell phone you, the vibrations and your sensors will open up and then you'll start pulling in the energy afterwards to get the result you're mm. looking for and there and we have them listed under things for your physical health things for your monetary uh health things for your uh creativity uh things for your op one of the great things that i love about the, the uh source energy techniques is that it opens up the uh einstein part of your brain you know that other 90 percent we're not using all yeah. the time it's available to you. And sure. you know at certain times uh, when push got the shove, uh, I don't know if you had this experience, but I remember in high school or college uh, is during finals week, all of a sudden you can read anything and you learn it, right? Mm -hmm. And you go, where did this ability come from? You know, mm -hmm. Why isn't this here all the time? When people say you know, that uh, during the semester, I, it would have been a lot easier to learn all this rather than the week before. Sure. So that ability you can just turn on now. Just listen to one of the auditories or, uh, that we've got uh, available through an app. Uh, and they also have the videos that you can watch. And in those, it's more three-dimensional uh, because the, you've got – I'm presenting from stage, giving people how to do things uh, both physically and uh, going along, pointing out a lot of the uh, resistances that you face in life that you're really not aware of, that you get sucked into. They're really – the grandmaster used to always call them tricks, so I still call them tricks. That everything that knocks you off is really a trick. Uh, it, it, to point out the fact that who you are and source energy is really much stronger Absolutely. than any of the distractions or disruptions that you run into. However, if you get sucked into worrying all the time, being upset all the time, or being ill, and nothing can release you from that, then you start to circle the drain, and it's hard to get out of that. It's very hard because you just sort of your feelings and thoughts seem to cave in on you. That's right. What's so great about listening to one of the audios or watching the videos uh, is that, or doing the physical exercises, is that it pops you right out of that, and all of a sudden you're back in that uh, centered state. You're in the 360 state. You're in the ability to. Uh, go through and not be ruffled by whatever is in your work. Sure. Or, and you become very creative and you come up with solutions right there. I think that's one of the greatest things I think 
uh, that for me that I've enjoyed is that people who are stuck with all kinds of problems when they call and I'll say just listen to this tape or go watch this video and they'll, and they'll call me back and say oh my whole problem is like really resolved yeah just re like uh, metabolized out of the system yeah you want an example sure absolutely yeah there was a lady uh, sweet lady I mean uh, she's uh, uh, I think she's she, she was in med school but she wanted to drop out and so she she met a friend who was in the energy at that time uh, and uh, source energy uh, practices and uh, was doing them you know the 30 minutes a day and she says you know I, I'm dropping out of med school I can't stand it it's making me too nervous I'm upset all the time it's too much work and you know I just don't I feel this isn't the right thing for me and she says well you should try the source energy techniques and she went really she met this lady on the plane but eventually uh, she did the practices and did so well that her grades went way up and she ended up being elected the uh, head of her class mm. as far as the uh, person who was uh, in, when, when she finally made it from medical school to internship and residency, she got to be uh, chief of her department uh, for the students. It's like we call it chief resident for the, for the other residents there. And then from there, uh, she did so well that uh, she got this fantastic job uh, at a number of different universities. Uh, and then uh, she called me again, which and I was so happy for her that she'd done so well because we now have a really heartfelt doctor who really cared about people. And, and she was just totally getting stronger and smarter all the time. And she just loved the energy and even had her patients listen to some of the uh, visualizations. But she says, you know, I, I've been working so hard. I really want a husband. And I went, okay. This is, you know, the energy is all about you getting all eight all the time. You're supposed to be growing in relationship, physical health, your ability to contribute to other people, your ability to be financially successful, your, your ability to get smarter, more intuitive and insightful. So she says, well, I just don't want a guy though. I want to, you know, I haven't had that much time. I'd like to have a soulmate. Yeah. And I went, yeah, you're meant to have, meant to have the right guy. You're not meant to, you know, do the thing that a lot of people have to go through, which is just decide this is the person I'm in love with and this is going to work. And I hope it works. I said, there's ways to know, just like you've learned how to work your way back through low grades and almost failing out of medical school to becoming, you know, super success. Uh, so she did. She found the great guy. Now, it's a better story because she's uh, Islamic. And she told her family, I am not marrying an Islamic guy. I want to marry a guy who's not Islamic. I want to marry a guy who's, um, she had her quite criteria. Sure. And her family, who were uh, doctors, uh, uh, Islamic doctors were very wonderful people, but they were very strict about what she needed to do. She says, I'm going to do this on my own or else I'm not going to get married. Well, they eventually, they met the guy and, they, and, for, and with her ability to be in the energy and loving and caring and sort of creating that field. So the parents just went, yeah, he seems great. You know, it was like, this no is issue. there was nothing to worry about. Yeah. They, they dropped all that stuff and said, she's happy and we're happy. And I don't know what we were upset about. And so the, it's now one big happy family. And uh, the husband is doing great at work. Uh, and he's using the energy techniques to become uh, actually one of the top guys uh, for a major uh, shoe company that we all know. I won't mention the okay. name. But the point is that his using the energy techniques and her having not only uh, opened up the Einstein part of her brain and her being calm, whereas before she was, oh gosh, she would, she'd cycle through so many nervous reactions that she couldn't even say. She would actually shake when I first met her. Sure. So that's, that's the promise of really life. Life is meant to be that not only uh, can it get better and better each day, but that that's something you can start to expect without having to jump up and down and say, you know, I'm positive, which is okay. I want you to be positive. Everybody should be positive. We should be positive because you know it's, that's what's waiting for you. Yes. That reward's waiting for you. And what pulls us away are the distractions that aren't really as powerful as you with the energy. And so doing the techniques puts you in that place like... Um, Neo, where all of a sudden, even if Mr. Smith shows up, you're going to center it aligned. You'll center, and he's out. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing how alignment can not just shift your own mm -hmm. perspective, but how people are responding to you, and you realize like the internal parts have been kind of given this energy off that creates the response in your life. And we've had so many people yeah. who, I guess, one thing I think it would be important for your listeners is that the energy is just like each person's different what they really want to use the energy for absolutely i mean some people they go you know i really want to, like she wanted a soulmate uh i've had people come to me who didn't have a chance at some things as far as making a lot of money or being successful they just didn't have the background and you know now they're 
contributed to charities in less than 10 years. They've made a ton of success financially. Some of the people you know, they're on the website. You mentioned some of them. But yep. uh, in being able to work with those people, it's been very satisfying. But for a while, I was working with just you know people in the NBA, people in the NFL, people in the National Hockey League, that just to show that you could be a pro athlete. But you know they get injured all the time. Sure. So they use the energy just to be able to improve and go back in the game. Mm. Uh, and, and stay in the game and succeed. Uh, I, I really want people to get the, the expectation that it is meant for you to do better and better each day. And if it's not happening that way, there is a absolute solution for that using these techniques. And that if you use them, you have the same results that you know 40,000 people have done so far without any uh, marketing at all. We've just it's all been word of mouth for the past 12, 13 years. So yeah, I'm, I'm, it's around. Uh, I'm excited to try it myself. I mean, uh, what I find is I, I will stabilize a frequency for a period of time, feel some slide back. Uh, I often feel like uh, if even if I'm releasing trauma or something like that, it comes out kind of the way that it came in. It could be very uncomfortable at times doing a lot of different methodologies. Uh, That's the best thing about source energy. Remember, it's the root and then out of the root comes all these different branches. So the branch of acupuncture, the branch of Tai Chi, the branch of Qigong, all of which I'd learned before I came to the mountain. Right. I was even in the Shaolin Monastery learning all the great Shaolin techniques on how to fight and, and balance yourself. It was phenomenal. But once you're in the zone or in the flow at will, you can do many of the Shaolin tricks without even knowing you're doing them. Hmm. Just all of a sudden, you're there hmm. and you're in that position. So. I think one of the most important things about the energy is that you get to choose depending on what you want, and then you don't have to think so much about it. Just by watching the videos and getting the uh, your, your sensors in your body to open up to that uh, vibration you need, you don't have to feel the vibration. We're in the Western world. We're so much interested in being able to know and yeah, think everything understand through. It. Mm -hmm. But when you hit a home run, you're not knowing or thinking anything. You're just all of a sudden hit, and mm -hmm. you're there. You're part of. The bat, you're part of the ball. It's all one motion, and it's beautiful. Yeah. It's the same thing in golf. I've had people use the energy techniques in golf, and I even taught golf. And uh, it's phenomenal when people find out that they can improve their score right there just by doing the energy practice, hmm. right there without having to do anything else other than say, okay, I'm going to, you know, just I'm not going to be concerned with anything other than being in this space, not some funky space, but space you choose to be in with the ball and then the ball's going to go there and i've had people do that over and over and over again and they just surprise themselves they start laughing because all of a sudden they whack yeah look at the power again whack mm -hmm. and they go god whack, can i go can you go with me all the time i go i'm not going to anything. you're doing the practices and then, and then they go on and do that so there's really eight areas that it focuses on the source energy it's, it's the gift we've been given to be here uh, from whether, whether you believe in God or Mother Nature or the universal energy, all of that still encompasses the fact that we're very fortunate to be here on this planet to help each other by being able to strengthen ourselves every day by uh, opening your uh, all your abilities to get stronger each day as far as becoming more creative. We've had people write uh, screenplays, write books, uh, become, uh, as we mentioned, financially very, very successful, athletically very successful, so your body gets stronger. We even have a guy, a uh, gentleman, um, 83, uh, who came to me and wanted to learn how to fly a plane. Hmm. And I said, really, 83? You think you can do it at 83? He says, yeah, I really want to. And I said, he says, you think the energy would help me uh, get my license? I said, yeah, if you'll, if you'll do the practice. And he ended up uh, you know, buzzing the uh, lecture hall one time with his airplane after... Uh, in his 80s cool. uh, so it doesn't mean I've had children use the uh, breathing exercises you know they're, they're just barely verbal one year old and two years old and uh, it allowing them to listen to these breathing exercise breathe, guided visualizations at nighttime allows them not to have those night terrors mm. they sleep better they don't keep waking up all the time it's quite a bit uh, what we're we could, made we to could experience. use that right now yeah I know, yeah. I, know. <laughs> I had somebody call me on the way here and I said audio you want to listen to is this one and so cool uh, i think his child's what maybe four months old but the thing is that you you also get serendipity you know i, I love that part serendipity on command where yes. you know, you, let's say what your to-do list is 
10 things you say you're going to do. And then if you do the latest tech, it's pick one thing and do that one thing right. Get the main thing to be the one thing, you know, which isn't <laughs> that much fun. But anyway, you do it. And supposedly that pulls the other ones through. But what's so great about the energy with serendipity, things start coming to sure. you. Sure. So you all of a sudden you have all these people trying to help you that didn't even know that there was, oh, that's number 32 on my list, but that person's coming in. And I wasn't even thinking about that today. I wasn't mm -hmm. even thinking about that for a week. And yet now here's this person helping you so that you get through your day and you do get home in time to be with your wife and your kids. Whereas before he was going to be, oh, how am I going to make it? Yeah. And uh, your, your abilities become more manifest each day, which I think is a great experience rather than saying, you know, as I get weaker and more tired, I'm going to have to take more and more whatever the latest rage is as far as a supplement or some other kind of, you know, Western medicine to try to solve the problem when that doesn't solve the source of the problem, which yes. is that you actually have the ability to have that be warded off. Or even if you did take the medication for the medication to work, it's got tremendous support by you being in your best possible shape. So we've had people who actually had metastatic cancers who have had to go through chemotherapy and the doctors have said, well, you know, I don't know. Sometimes the chemotherapy is really rough on people. And for you, it's not bothering you at all. Mm -hmm. And then usually these people say, you need to do these energy techniques. Tell your other clients to do that. And you're not losing your hair. Why is that? And yet they come out, you know, and they're doing better. So there's, there's nothing wrong. With, if there's the right chemotherapy for you or the right thing in Western medicine, that's great. But all the side effects and you being strengthened enough to go through it and not have sure. to have a prolonged period of going through it is the thing I was always looking for. Because my whole goal since day one, you know, over 25 years ago, has been that I, f I had the experience and then it's been realized, uh, and that's why we didn't advertise for over 10 years, uh, is that the, because I wanted to prove this with all the testimonials, that people, once you're a more able to do things, like you don't flunk out of medical school, all of a sudden you can do it, and I'm not there, you're doing it, you become more peaceful. And the more peaceful you are, the more your peace will run your family and they yeah. pick up that field. And it's my strong, strong, you know, almost certainty that the source of world peace really can come from people being peaceful Personal safety. without having to stress about being peaceful. And there's so many books about how to be peaceful and how to get the latest thing. And I love all the, you know, I, I listen to Audible all the time. It, you know, 1.5, 1.7, to as fast as I can learn sure. it because it's so fascinating, all the things that people bring out. But you still have to be able to include everything and still be peaceful and successful and be with your family. You want to have this thing that almost everybody finds difficult, which is to include it all. Yeah. And the way you're made when you're in the flow all the time and in serendipity helping you out and being creative is that you can just rely. I mean, I just remember this one gentleman told me who was quite a famous writer, he says, since I've been doing the energy practices, um, I know when I go to bed at night that I'm going to get up tomorrow morning and I'm going to write, you know, at least 50 pages and it'll be good. It'll just come out straight out. And I just do that every day and I'm finished. I don't have to tie myself to my chair, you know, like some famous writers have, have done uh, just to be able to finish, you know, the next novel I want to write or the screenplay. And it's what's so much fun about it is, is that ha people become happier then because you sort of know that tomorrow's going to be a good day. There's an ease to life. Yeah, so yeah. I can and, and, it, and I can go to sleep now and not worry that I need to be up all night. Right, no, not chew on it. Da, 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 yeah. da, 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 all that stuff. Yeah. So you have more joy of being with other people. You have mm -hmm. more joy of being uh, out in nature. I think, I think that's one of the largest uh, reports I hear from almost everyone is that it, immediately after starting with any of the practices, they start to notice that things take on that extra glow, uh, that you start to notice that things are actually vibrating a bit and you're not on any drugs. Right. You actually are experiencing what you know you were meant to experience being here mm -hmm. on the planet. So the joy of this existence is heaven on earth once you get the experience. Now, if you choose to say, well, I really don't care about that and what I really want to do is you know, do something injurious to myself. Well, we have that option, but we've already seen where that's led us for 2000 years and that's not going to get me world peace. Yeah. That gets people who are upset. I want people to find out that you can be so positive about what your opportunities are every day with this structure you've got that you can, you know, it doesn't matter what age you're at. You can start doing, you know, yoga and Pilates and all these other things you'd like to do and your body will respond once you're opening up yourself to all the different vibrations that are there to heal you moment by moment by moment. 
and you, to count all the different sensors in your body would be a wonderful project for some people for me to train them in each one of those but the more important thing is get the result that's what the name of the company is energy for success the, start getting success in feeling good all day start getting success in being able to lift things whereas before you felt you know i don't know i feel like my back sore my neck sore something start finding out that you're not argumentative one person said they found out that they were a comedian yeah and one lady told me this is a really funny story um this is uh she, i know she won't mind me telling the story uh, <laughs> uh but i'll leave her name out she's 92 so she came to me uh and said you know this energy is really working and she was 88 and so um, I said, well, great, I'm glad it's all working for you. I said, what do you want to tell me? She says, well, I want you to tell me, I want, you, I want to tell you that it's really working in my family. I went, oh, that's great. She says, me and my sister. I went, oh, that's fantastic. What's happening? She says, well, I haven't talked to my sister in 55 years. Wow. 55 years. She says, and, you know, after doing these energy processes, the guided visualizations and watching the videos and, and just uh, recognizing that there's so many things that I can do to actually experience life at a, at a more fun uh, exciting and vibrant level as if I was getting younger each day which is one of the one of the pseudonyms for this type of energy in, in the Orient which is just to get younger treatment is she says that I just decided I was just going to connect with my sister and see what would happen and they became very very good friends mm. at, that, uh, at a, a much advanced age and she ended up being connected with her for years until finally the sister passed away and so this lady's now in her 90s and still cranking and still comes to some of the live seminars I give. And she shows up, I sometimes have her share. And I said, tell, because we have these, um, uh, I know she shares, we have free, we have these uh, uh, every day, uh, people calling from all over the world and share their miracles. Uh, we have someone facilitating that every day of the year uh, for one hour. Uh, sometimes it's twice a day, but uh, there's so many people in so many places around the world where they've used the techniques and found out that they could become smarter, uh, more flexible, stronger, and more productive, uh, and more effective, that they want to tell other people. And so sure. then that, that creates this environment. I mean, and I didn't start this. They asked for this. And so that I, I said, sure, we'll set that up for you. And so sometimes it's a Zoom call. Sometimes it's everyone just calls in uh, on one of the big, big lines where so many people can talk. And people call in from all different parts of the world. And what's exciting is that one person stimulates the next person who stimulates the next person saying well that person did this and they did that what a great story i think maybe i'll try that and then they go back and do their practices or more inspired to do it so it's more one example after another sometimes there's 30 people sharing sometimes 40 in just one hour beautiful yeah i'm definitely curious to try it myself yeah so yeah yes we i have something for your audience you know I'm super like excited said, it's a it's an app, yeah. uh, which is really a very good app. Yeah, feel free to uh, share with them. Well, We're... it's an app, and it's a very, very good app. Uh, it's very useful. Um, we've got on there, I think, a, a guided breathing visualization. There's one on there which is people seem to love, and uh, it's uh, I purchased it for every one of the people who uh, use this uh, special code. So it's something that usually would... Uh, have to pay for it, but I, I wanted to purchase it for your uh, all the people following. And so it's you go to um, I know forward slash is we're getting we're getting it right now. We're getting it. What's the forward slash? So we got uh, energy for success dot org backslash Satori. Is it backslash or forward, or forward slash, slash forward slash, slash Satori? Yeah. Yes. So we're at Accurate. Satori. This is great. S A T O R I. Right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. So it's forward slash Satori, and then the, the beginning of it is the name of the uh, our URL Energy for F O R Success. And remember, success is two C's yeah. and two, two S's. S's. And dot, dot org. That often to writing, you know, success. S U C C E S S. Yeah. Yep. But it's Energy for F O R Success, all one word, and uh, you can even download from the site. Uh, an icon that you can have a beautiful icon on your front page where you can just click that and go to see uh, when you go to the website other things that are there but this free item that I mean this item that I've purchased for you is really effective we've had people really enjoy using it so I recommend you start with that and uh, listen to it every day or before you go to bed or in the morning when you're shaving just something when you have a chance just to fully just listen you can have your eyes open or eyes closed 
but just don't think about anything for a moment if you can and just go along with me in that and see what the result is beautiful and then text us back on social or uh you can let harmony know from customer support just how it works for you and i'll be very interested in how your audience enjoys um this uh, one of we have many uh guided breathing visualizations but this one is one we picked we thought that for starting right away and getting a result it'd be something fun for all of you amazing thank you for sharing that um just to start wrapping it up i mean obviously look you've had a i mean incredible life is an understatement and i know you left out a lot of a very long story of how you got there um so when you i'm just curious like now you've come back you're finishing the medical practice but philosophically obviously going through that experience must have changed something about your view of the world view of society view of politics view of medicine oh yeah um you know coming back from that reintegrating into society reintegrating into the medical community mm-hmm. watching what for big pharmaceutical drugs are doing mm-hmm. to the you know to people and mm-hmm. all these side effects mm-hmm. knowing what you know mm-hmm. how do you come back into that space uh, i mean were you still working with people and I sub- doing subscribing surgery, those I was drugs? Doing endoscopic surgery up until uh 10 months ago when yeah. i finally decided that's enough this the world's ready for this and the world needs this now and so that i just decided that's that there's time for me just to make this full full time before that i was doing surgeries in the daytime seeing patients and then in the evenings and on the weekends unless i was traveling is i was treating people either one-on-one or giving the lectures um uh, or recording all the materials which we have available for you on the website yeah excited to check those out and so you're let me make sure i answered your question specifically i just i just guess like uh, my, my curiosity is so you come back with i mean this extraordinarily high level of awareness you know you're awakened in, in many respects that people might call and then you come back into this like really traditional rigid western space and you have clients and, and people coming to you and wanting help like how how did that reintegrate I'm, I'm wondering did you bring that philosophy forward were you very open with people who came to you and you're like hey by the way we can do the surgery and there's this oh, whole other in the early days yeah yeah, yeah or, when I first came back, I would always give people in my office the opportunity. I would say, hey, um, you know, you're having trouble with this antibiotic and you keep having a side effect with it. Would you like to try something that, um, you know, I brought back from my studies in China? I wouldn't even tell them my level of expertise. Sure, sure. And they would go, well, we trust you. We've been your patient for years. i say, sure. And so then I would say, well, okay, here's what you do. And then just let Rosie in the front desk know <clears throat> and get back to me how it works. Let me hear from you in about a week. And then over and over again, people were getting profound yeah. benefits, profound gapping up, found amping up into becoming like, hey, I feel stronger today. And I was like coughing up garbage yesterday. Mm-hmm. And I don't, my fever's gone and, my, um, and I'm not so irritable. Matter of fact, I'm not irritable at all. I'm sort of positive. So I noticed that as I kept bringing that in as an adjunct to my own clients that, and as I met other doctors who I would give them the opportunity to uh, see the videos and the audio and the audience and do the physical practices that they loved it for themselves and then they would bring that to their own clients and so then more and more people were going oh this is something really <laughs> unique there was no name for it other than something dr b brought back from you know his hard work in uh, the mountains in china but uh after we created the website and then people could download materials then it just took off and it became something on its own that people told one person after another around uh, the globe that, uh, you know, we want more of this, we want more of this. And so I kept bringing more of it out. And so now we have all these different levels that you can go through, like getting different belts, you know, in karate or something where you can get more and more able at each one of the eight different areas that make up the grade eight of your, uh, of your sort of birthright, of being able to become healthier and stronger each day, to become smarter to become more capable to become uh have more serendipity in your life to be uh in the zone or flow and uh, uh, you know at will to be creative uh to, get, uh to have relationships that are really finan- you know, phenomenal and what i love the see if, if relationships if you took that as the whole goal mm-hmm. that you're related with yourself and your relationship with other people and there is love all the time as the vibration of just that we're all connected as one, which is part of quantum, uh, is that who's, who do you want to fight? You want to fight yourself? No. You don't. Do you want to beat yourself up? No. Yeah. So then it, it becomes, it, it really does take a village. It, we need each other. We're all separate, wonderful qualities in each of us. 
to contribute to everybody else. And so now that's my dream, I think, is at least with all the clients that have come through the programs to see that they've gotten that ability, that their families are in so much better shape. And people that, I mean, there's one lady I was talking to Krista about before we started was that she has a PhD, her husband's a PhD, they're both really intelligent, they got intelligent kids and they want to get a divorce. And uh, the kid has Asperger's uh, disease, uh, one of them. And so that was two years ago. Now, they didn't get a divorce. They've been doing all the programs. Their kids are doing the program. The Asperger's son is no longer has that problem, and his grades have gone way up, and he's even running for political office, which you know usually Asperger people are not usually doing that. Yeah, sure. Enough. And uh, in his school, and he's very, very happy, and they're happy with each other, and they're no longer – they think that was – they said it was – it was Chris's joke. She says, well, the program with Energy for Success is a whole lot less expensive and stressful than every other thing we ever tried to try to get us to get together. And uh, so you all became my new therapy. We have a lot of psychiatrists and psychologists that have done the programs, and they say that it makes their uh, ability to communicate to their clients uh, much more effective. There was one lady called this... Uh, actually from Mexico City and uh, she said I just want you to know that I had everybody in my uh, practice listen to the you know, the guided visualization we have different ones that are that have more breathing exercises on it uh, but it, it's made such a difference in them being able to hear me of what I've been trying to communicate to them so that they could help themselves so that's my dream that all the people that have become professionals like you and everyone else is trying to make your contribution to the world sure. can do it every day and sure. then you become more satisfied as you become more satisfied, it brings you on to doing the next thing. And then you become more satisfied. Rather than the history of mankind for the past 2,000 years is one of dissatisfaction, acrimony, and sort of stomaching it or you know, be, taking medication so you're not irritated or trying to zone out by some you know, the exploratory medication that somehow is going to give you relief or alcohol or some other drug. There's nothing like necessarily like... I'm again, not against those. I'm just saying that's not going to get me the goal that I wanted, which is connection with people yes. on a worldwide basis. And I think we need that now. Agreed. So I've noticed that in my office with people and their families. I've noticed it with all the, the doctors who I've uh, had come through the different programs. I've noticed with their clients. I've noticed with so many different people who've been able to actually accomplish the things they've always wanted to accomplish in life. And that's why you're here. You're here and you deserve that. And I want people to have that. And so that's why I'm still doing this. Yeah. That's it. Thank you for bringing this. This amazing work. I love, uh, I love uh, that you're this mild mannered, peaceful man who has the most wild stories. Some of the w most wild stories I've ever heard and bringing through this incredible work. Oh, yeah. My clients is, you know, that I, for the longest time I was just in the background. I yeah. wasn't going to come out. I was, I was hoping that people that I'd treated uh, and given these programs to over the years would be the ones that would, uh, be front stage, but you know people like Dave Asprey has, has said, no, no, you you need to go out and tell people. Sure, about I've been using your stuff for seven years. Mm. You know, I, when I started with him, he was he had, had the first book, and then since then, I'm in the second book and a whole chapter in there, and then the third book, and I've, and I've worked with him on a number of different things, and he's just zoomed and zoomed and zoomed his whole company. Yeah, and incredible uh, growth. Tony yeah. has done great with the material. The people, for whatever you think of, you know his recent news. That's not really important. The years I've been working with him, he's just a phenomenal fellow. Well, sure. His heart felt. Sure. Uh, but if you notice his career, it's been like this and like this and like this and like this. And I've been there with him uh, through many, many of the years where he's been tr doing the best to try to make it back and using uh, these techniques with he and I working together and then his coming out. I mean, he can do, what, 16 hours on stage? How many people can do that? Yeah. But he uses these techniques and other things that he's worked on to be able to amp himself so that he can do it. He's always looking for new things. So I'm really proud of all the people who have taken the energy. And you mentioned Werner Earhart's another person yeah. who is just Very phenomenal. respect for him, yeah. And, you know, Werner said that when, um, I think it's on his, at least it's in one of his interviews, he said, I don't give recommendations to anybody. You know, I don't give testimonies to anybody. But for Dr. B, I will. Yeah. That was nice. I like that. That's amazing. Because I'm not looking for the credit. What I want is for you all to realize you've got an option here. Mm. You've got really an opportunity, and you don't have to you know, decide how many supplements do I need to take today and which protein bar. And maybe. You do need to learn all those things that are totally valuable to you, but it's not this massive, unending thing that never gives you any relief. You can actually get centered with and be 
more and more powerful each day, and then take just the things that are going to be necessary for you to go each level up and up. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I, I wish all the people in your audience the uh, continued connection with you and your, uh, and your work and your heartfelt space. And uh, it's a joy to see that you care so much. And that means a lot to me. Likewise. I know that's why we get to meet. I think so. Yeah. I appreciate you being here. It was fun. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, again, uh, energy for success. Remember, 2Cs2S's.org forward slash Satori. And you guys can go pick up some of those uh, free audios that he's talking about. And yeah. I hope you do the practices. I know I'm uh, very motivated to try some of those things and, and work on that. So I'll be reporting my feedback too as oh, you will. I go through it. And yeah, I look great. forward to being in touch with you and letting oh, you know how I'm doing. Let me tell you, the number one thing that I can tell everybody out there that the best is yet to come. If Agreed. you start with these, these practices, you're going to find out, oh, my gosh. I mean, I remember when I first came in contact with it, I went, gosh, I had this like in grade school or high school. You know, since then, I've been able to pass it on to kids. I said, there'd be, there'd be no stopping you. Yeah. You know, you could be on all the teams, and you could still do all your studies, and you could travel, and you could get all your family, mm. and I mean, do everything because you're, you don't have those dips. No more of those crashes. And uh, that's <laughs> how life was meant to be. You know, you are supposed to sleep, but you're also supposed to enjoy your life. And I don't know if people do either one of them very well in our society. Agreed. You know, yeah. I really enjoyed being here. Thank you for being here very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Bye. Appreciate you. Bye, guys.